The last way that we're going to see to read CSV files is to read them from a URL on the internet. We will do this in the way that we previously read regular text files in using the, the get method from the requests module. However, the text that is returned from the request module can't be iterated directly, but we can turn the text that we've received into an iterable list by using the split lines method that we saw in an earlier lesson. So once we've generated an iterable list, we can pass that into either reader or dict reader, and then that iterable can be used to generate a list of lists or a list of dictionaries in the same manner that we did this with a local file. The data that we are going to read comes from this source here. This is data about Nashville schools from the years 2018 to 2019, and it's available on GitHub. In our code, we are reading it using this raw file URL listed right here. So as we did in previous examples, here is some template code that we can use to read in a file using a URL and return it as a list of lists. We start by using the requests get method to retrieve the response for the getting the data from that raw URL. Once we've received that text, then we take that text and use the split lines command to turn it into a list, which is an iterable item. That iterable list is then passed into the CSV reader object to create an iterable of file rows. So we then iterate through the rows in that file and attach each list one at a time to this list of lists and that's what gets returned by the function. So here in the main script we're going to invoke a function here and take the resulting list of lists and put it in this school's data variable. So now we are going to print the value of two items in the header row the item in column two and the item in column three. And then we will iterate through the entire list of schools data rows in the list of lists. But we will start not with line zero, which would be the header row, but the first line of data. And we'll print the values of those two columns. So I run the script. It takes a little bit of time, <clears throat> but I can see that the uh, column two is the school ID, column three is the school name, and it's gone through and retrieved that information for all the schools in that data file. The way to retrieve it as a list of dictionary is basically the same, except that I'm creating a dict reader object, then stepping through and appending the dictionaries from each row onto my list of dictionaries. So I'm going to return a list of dictionaries rather than a list of lists. Now, when I refer to the columns of the school, instead of referring to them by their column number, I can refer to them by their column name. So it's a little easier to tell what's going on that I'm going to report the school name and the school ID. And I don't have to remember that that's column two and column three. So in a similar manner to the other scripts that we've written, the user puts in the name of a school, then it'll check to see in a case insensitive way whether that school name is included as a part of the name of any school. If it finds it, it'll tell us the name and the school ID. If it doesn't find it, this flag helps us to know that the school was not found and it's going to print this error message. So I will run the script. It asks me, I will type in Croft. The ID number for Prophet Middle School is 238. Let's try Hill. OK, well, there's a number of schools, HD Hills Middle School, Harris Hillman School, Hillsborough High, and Hillwood. Lots of schools in Nashville that start with Hill. 